Hello, welcome, I'm Carbon Chili, and this is the extravaganza that is my channel, where we play professional games unprofessionally. Now, um, to address the possible elephant in the room, uh, I left the last episode on a bit of an enigma. Uh, as I said, it was a look into the future. Um, because it was recorded after the fact. Now, the TLDR, if you uh, want to kind of skip to the end, is that I scum saved. Now, I wanted to discuss a little bit today about scum saving. That's why this episode's perhaps going to be a little bit different from uh, the normal viewing or programming. Um, I'm going to go in a little bit into the psychology of scum saving, why we do it, and some of the conclusions that I've come to regarding scum saving. So, first of all, I'm going to talk about the reasons why we play games. Now, we play games for different reasons. Um, for entertainment, for enjoyment, for problem solving, for graphical aesthetics, sound. There are many different reasons why we play different games. Uh, atmosphere, even. Now, what am I looking for in a game? Now, that's changed over the years, in all honesty. But I play a lot of strategy, tactical, building kind of games. So I'm looking for something that maybe has a story, a story building, not storyline, because I like my own freedom to create. So that's another reason why we, we uh, play games is actually it can give us a, um, a release of our perfection. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and start the combat here. Um, now, the reason I did uh, I did scum save is because I was so abysmal in this mission, and I got three people killed. So, what is scum saving? Scum saving basically is, and I changed the name. Uh, scum saving or save scumming is when we save at a critical point in the game so that we can go back to that point if we don't continue or we don't uh, we don't or we are unable to actually uh, complete it in the way that we want it in the successful way. Now, autosaving is a little bit different, and I will mention it at the end. So, why do we choose the games that we do? Well, uh, as I say, some people do it for the adventure, and these are the story-type games. Uh, some people do it for the problem-solving. Uh, if you think of things on a very basic level, things like Tetris. Uh, now... Another reason why people might play games is so that they can, uh, like I said, the adventure, the storyline, uh, problem solving, uh, also time wasting. Uh, this is a relatively new phenomenon in the world of games, but if you think of some of the mobile games, these are designed basically to kill time. Now, a uh, couple of disclaimers here as well before I continue. I'm not telling anyone here how to play a game, to do it, why to do it, not to do it. I'm telling you the conclusions that I've come to. In addition to this, I actually already did this this uh, video once before, um, playing Dune, um, and as normal. Uh, I made a mistake. I didn't record the video properly. Uh, the microphone was on mute. The same with this game. Uh, I recorded the previous screenshot incorrectly. So often we, we, we will make mistakes. Now, the job of the programmer... So 
basically a computer game is a loop it's a loop uh it's a program and it is an iteration of various um variables factors and objects so our aim as the player is to uh, often to be able to to dig deep and see those loops and iterations now it's the job of the programmer to actually hide those loops and iterations to hide the pattern behind the gameplay to hide what we shouldn't be able to see which is that it's a program uh, we should be able to sequence and experience the game in a way that it, the programmer is able to hide those loops and sequences now i've always played games very often in my life with the aim of being able to spot these these patterns uh i mean you may want to call it a, 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 an unexpected feature even now since i started my channel and maybe possibly a bit before that i actually dis changed the way that i look at computer games from less of a program and more of an adventure or a story so when i play i create my own story i, I visualize i imagine i vest an interest in my players now this gets down to one of the reasons why we scum save we scum save because it's an obsessive behavior pattern it's something we do because we're seeking perfection we're seeking idealism we have a vested interest in the character the game the gameplay and we want to do it in the most perfect way possible now this is why often children or younger people will scum save more than adults do now i'm not saying this this is a very sweeping generalization but i can remember when i was certainly a child i scum saved all the time uh because i wanted to do or play the game in the in, in the best way possible now in this particular case i kind of analyzed and i looked and i thought about it why do i want to go back why do i want to scum save now i actually realize it because i've given my characters names i've given the names of them the names of my pets even which makes it even harder i don't want to lose or connect the idea of losing a pet so there are many reasons why we might do this but in this case it's a vested interest but again it's a, a paralysis of analysis it's a fear of failure or not reaching an ideal or a perfection in our story in our narrative or in our gameplay uh so as computer games evolve and as they get more complex uh the, the exponential the exponential choices will grow to such a point where it becomes impossible to see the pattern or the loop or the iteration um but as it stands at the moment we are able to do this and this is why we scum save because we will know that we're always able to go back to that certain point and choose better options now auto saving slightly different because as the game progresses and you uh as the game progresses Not and the, game the choices change because more happens uh you lose track of what's happening so eventually you're unable to remember the choices you made or the choices you should be making uh so in short the reason why i no longer try to some stave and I, I don't see it as bad but i try not to do it is because 
the story is a narrative for me. It's a, it's a story. It's, I create the ideal in my head, or I create the image. The ideal is probably the wrong way to put it, but I create the image and the narrative in my head. And like in real life, if somebody dies, somebody dies. Uh, and I think kudos to RimWorld. It was RimWorld that, that kind of first started me thinking this, you know, that, you know, one of you colonists die, meh, there'll be two or three more to pick up and there will be multiple hundreds of thousands more stories or story arcs that can, that can come from that. So, um, without further ado, ado, I'm going to concentrate a little bit more on, on uh, the game playing so that we don't have such a catastrophe as we had last time. So, actually, I'm going to cut this video short here. Uh, so I've been Carbon Chili, you've been the audience, and this has been Phoenix Point. Thank you. Mm -hmm.